this time on Custom Works, which is a lot more like this week, Hot Rod Legend Lee Cox works. Alright. <laughs> So this song on Custom Works, we're going to be looking at the ramp on the 60s truck. It's been an absolute nightmare. We needed like 12 inches. We couldn't get that though. But we came up with, I'm not going to say, do we come up with a solution? You're going to have to wait and find out. I bet we do. We're probably going to win. Well, yeah, yeah. Anyway, also what we're going to be doing is starting some work on the interior of this car. Now, there's a big hole in the back of the cab, but of course, that's where the, um, that's where the motorbike comes in. Anyway. Enough talking, I like there's always enough talking. Let's get to the workshop, let's get it done. So at the back of the truck, with the bike, we've got a problem that we need to come out and then drop down, but we need the bike to move backwards. And what we were doing before we had all the body around it, was just tilting the thing and the bike could just drop back on the winch and then we'd just winch it down and it would roll off. But we need it to go backwards before it tips. So what we're doing, we're putting a gas ram into the mechanism. So this is the mechanism. This is the, just here, this is the, like the sled that the front wheel rides upon. When this winch pulls this up and then it holds it there, then you drive the car. When you want to take it off, as it, uh, the winch releases the tension, this actually pushes the bike back. So we get that sort of push-pull control of getting the bike right to the back of the ramp and then it can drop down. And why do we need this? Because bits stick out on the bike. Now th this, has been, this has been very compli complicated to do, but things like this bit, if the bike don't come all the way back, this bit's gonna be dropping on here and we want it to drop down here and go off nice and easily. And we don't wanna cut any more out of the body so whatever we cut out here has to go on the door, the continental kit that closes in on all this stuff. And uh, we, we can't cut any more out of that either. So this runway is really gonna work. Now to make the bike just move back sort of like 12 inches to get to that point, we were thinking of millions and millions of ways of doing it. And just, wasn't last week, I went on holiday, the week before, in the last, 30 minutes of the day, me and Lee were looking at this, and Lee knocked this up with the gas ram, um, that, and we, this is just bits we had laying around, and this is a prototype, and it's not quite enough, but now we're gonna go with two gas rams, they're 80 newtons each, and they will, it should easily push the bike back, so this is gonna work, but that is what we're making today, and hopefully by the end of the, today, this whole thing will finally work, with no human interruption. Don't have to touch anything, everything's on the remote. And the bike comes off. So, I know we're already in the workshop, but let's, let, 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 let's forget that and just go with, because you know, a good catchphrase can't be wasted. So uh, yeah, we need to make that. Let's get to the workshop. Right now, off right And here we can see Lee getting on with that work, making that sort of double barrel pipe thing that those uh, gas rams are gonna fit in. This is gonna be awesome and just a really neat solution to a very complex problem. And uh, I think as well, just a little top tip here. Don't ever have your tea. See here, here's Lee's tea. Lee's grinding. You're gonna be eating a, you're gonna be eating a lot of... Smiling in my diet.
credit where credit's due, I did all of this. It's brilliant. <laughs> no, actually, Hot Rod Legend Lee Cox did this. Now, we had this problem that the bike wouldn't just roll back on its own. You had to push it back. This, I think, is the magneto housing or something. I don't know. But when this dropped down, the bike wasn't far enough back. So, you saw earlier our prototype <coughs> that was made in a hurry at the end of the other week. But now we've got this. Two um, 18 Newton foot meter tall, whatever it is, rams to this, which is the sled. And now... That compresses the rams and the bike is the bike's fully on there. This is how the, the whole thing would slide forward and go in. But now when we go back, because we've not got gravity, because you know, gravity is never there when you really need it, but because we can't slope it, so if we drop this here, it hits the bodywork. Now we've got these rams to act as our false gravity to push the bike back. <laughs> And that's it. And from beyond that point, once it gets to there, we've got clearance to drop this down and then gravity takes over from that point. But those two rams have saved us so much work. And don't forget, those rams as well, no extra electrical, there's nothing else. They're just there. They will just do that forever. So um, this has worked out really, really well. And I've made a great, I mean, Lee has made a great job of it. Uh, and once we've got all the back on air, it will be superb. Right, so inside the 60s truck, of course the motorbike comes into the cab on this truck, so, you know, we were always going to have basically the motorbike in the cab, and we have to make this sort of doghouse to go over it. Now, Lee's made this, and he's made a, he's made a, a brilliant job, because like, this bit actually goes into the back of the seat. That's a seat at full recline, we've had to take a bit out of the seat, and then we've had to narrow this in many times, it looks like the Chrysler building or something. And from the other side, it's even more sort of like complicated down there. This thing really is, um, it has to fit around so many things. And it's all together now. It's, um, it's mitre bonded together and it's taped on the corner. So what we're going to do now is just go around this with some fiberglass on the edges, make it strong. Then we can remove it from here, bodywork the inside. Because of course you're going to see that. Bodywork the inside of this go over the outside so it's super strong and then find some sort of you know so we flange this back onto this back wall for fitment but it really has this is like day and a half's work here nearly two days work it's been really very very complicated to put together and as you can see it's just so many different levels and shapes in it but we're there we know it clears everything, the ramp can come in and out, everything clears, and both electric seats work. So we are getting there. But next step on this, bit of fiberglass, make it permanent, make it forever. This whole thing, of course, is made out of dye bond, and uh, it's given us, you know, you can get quite a good solid shape really quickly with dye bond. And of course, you can change your mind a lot. It's easy to cut, don't have to weld inside the car, you can just glue it together. It really does work. Um, it's just excellent for this sort of thing. So obviously it's not finished, but when we look inside, you now we can really see just how complicated this shape is. You know, it really is, it's just insane. And all of this just fits in there, and it fits around it literally like a hand in a glove. Hand in glove, that's how well it fits. It really has, it's been quite a journey to get in, but we're there, and what we're gonna do now is just make it solid and permanent with fiberglass. Right, so all of this is made now, and we've glassed over it, only a bits in the corners, but it's made it strong enough that we think we can now actually lift it out of the car without it falling to bits. So, that's what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to try and break it free from up here, where it's stuck a little bit, and hopefully we can get it out. Let's do it.
took it out. I got this outside, got the, the dog house outside, covered it. I probably gave this about three layers of fiberglass. We want it to be really strong. You know, this is the only thing between the outside and the inside. And it's all fiberglassed up now. And I've sort of started body working it because I'm thinking probably this bit will be painted. You know, the seats go either side and everything's so tight in here. The reason this will probably be painted is because we've probably not got the room to upholster this. So the back of the cab, I've boarded over all this so it's smooth. This will attach with a flange all the way around it, going all the way following this, which I'll mold onto this in fiberglass. And that's why I'm not being too, I'm not being too bothered about the finish at the minute, because there's gonna be more glass, but this will fit all the way around to here. And once that bolts into place, that makes the cab waterproof. We've got a few bits down in the floor there to sort of panel off. But after that, nice and sealed, the outside's the outside and the inside is the inside. The man who's having this car built doesn't, doesn't want the dashboard, a dashboard in it as such, not the replica dash that we use in the other ones. He wants something different. So. We were thinking what we can take off of the dash and it still work. And we, we came down, we, we, we talked through this for some time and what we've basically come to is it, it's a few lights we need. So we're gonna ditch the entire dashboard, just get rid of everything and then just bring in the bits we want back. You know, we'll have like a GPS speedo. It's not, not as if the dashboard's necessary. It's not like we've got a lot of telemetry on it, but definitely fuel gauge, I don't know, indicate our ignition, things like that. But we can do these quite easy with just some bulbs. So let's get this dash out of the car. Right, then, and seeing as this episode's like the, the Lee Cox show, <laughs> he's gonna get to, to it. He's gonna get rid of some of the wiring, some of these, uh, we've got some warning lights on there. And then we can pull the dash out. Get to it, Lee. I, I was happier when all this this crap was was covered up. Look at this. We got we got the fuse box, lots of random stuff that probably don't work. Cause it's a taxi. Quite. Oh my god. It's just um. There. Well, there it is. There, there, there's British wiring for you. Absolute nightmare. But hopefully, what we can do now sort this out, get it sort of zip tied back and in a place, and then we can look at designing the dashboard. So we want the dashboard to be here, I want the dashboard to link to this part as well. So from here is something that, you know what I mean, you know what I mean. You, 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 you know, I'm, I'm sure it'll be really easy once we start like putting things together. But yeah, yeah, a bit of that and a, you know. Oh God, there's a lot of wire. <laughs> so before we do anything more on that dash, what I'm going to do is going to blow out three decades of dust, dirt and general detritus and then we can start looking at what we're going to keep and what we're going to throw away. <laughs> Okay, 
right, so we're starting now to tidy up the wiring in this dash. Of course, it's a taxi, so it's had a thousand radios in it, them CB things. Can you pick someone up from around the corner? Okay, if you go in a minute. You know, that sort of thing. All that rubbish, all wide in it. But we're going to tidy it up and build a one-off custom dash. But that's coming up on another episode of Custom Works. So that's it for another week. But just before we go, a big thank you to Lee Croden, who is Crow Customs on Instagram. Just the, the brilliant things he sent me. First off, this super cool model. She's like a Citroen 2CV, then Beatnik Bandits, dome seats and interior, and maybe central bucket, I'm not too sure. I think all this might be scratch built, but you can see that cool 2CV front end. Really would make, you know, great real hot rod, uh, real sort of um, food for thought there. Amazing. Another thing Lee sent me. It's this small bag. No, it's not drugs. What it is, is years ago, there's the milk truck, which is a really famous show car. Lee Croden was, he was lucky enough to be in America and he met Dave Shutton and Dave gave him these flakes. And these flakes of paint are actually from the milk truck. So you can see different colors it's been through, um, you know, just, well, they're all purple, but you can see on some of them, you can see like different layers of paint. And it really is, it's like, um, it's like hot rod archeology. span Amazing stuff, absolutely amazing. And just amazing to be able to touch part of an absolutely legendary show car. So thank you very much to Mr. Croden. Also, just before I go, I've been on a podcast, an American podcast. You know, some of my crazy views on cards were spouted over the course of about an hour. And that is in the link below. So if this isn't enough, which really it should be, you can go and listen to that as well. Anyway, that is it for another week. Join us next time when we'll be doing more on that 60s shot and it's gonna be awesome. So don't forget, click subscribe, do all of those things. I thank you very much and good night.